morning, SD. Good morning, Santa Teresa. Good morning, Santa Teresa. Good morning, Santa Teresa. Today is Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. Today is Friday. And these are your Wednesday morning announcements. And these are your morning announcements. And these are your morning announcements. And these are your morning announcements. Santa Teresa is a public high school in suburban South San Jose. It may not seem like much on the outside, but the school is one of the most interesting programs in the school system. They host a daily news broadcast explaining the most newsworthy events going on in, in school and sometimes outside of school. This broadcast is very special and most people don't know much about it. This is Broadcasting the Documentary. Here, Miss P explains the beginning of the broadcast and how it got its start. The, we had a broadcast a while ago, like a, a a number of years ago, sometime before I actually came here, but I guess it wasn't um, super well managed. There was like a lot of issues going on. Um, people were throwing stuff across the screen. People were sabotaging each other. It was pretty, I guess, gnarly. So they shut it down, the program, for a long time. Yeah, the first, well, okay, our first, first, first broadcast was actually not a broadcast. It was, um, it was Matt Payton and Trevor Hook, and they were reading the announcements over the loudspeaker. I'm Matt Payton. And I'm Trevor Hook. How's it going today, Matt? Just fine. Are you excited? For what? This! This whole morning announcement thing. Yeah, this is sick. Okay, negative Nancy. Fill our listeners into the details about the broadcast. Our first actual show is amazingly bad. Um, it's like kind of two vaguely blurry figures like sitting at a table and then we somebody like took a poster and like painted STHS news onto it and I mean they tried really hard but I mean really it looks it looks like crap like uh, the wall behind it is like this ugly blue they're like it's very difficult to see any of it it was I mean there's no microphones there's no anything like it's one camera I mean it was really tragically bad at the beginning. When we first started, we first started in over by the English department. Um, we had we had a classroom that was um, uh, it was our studio and we uh, we just had to make do with what we had. We had a uh, we actually made like posters that would say uh, for each month so it would be like February or you know Christmas or so on and we had these really um, <laughs> these just really like just home video cameras that we had and uh, we just started out on that. We didn't have any final cut or anything like that. We just used the old version of iMovie. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything too fancy. After my third year that I was here, they said that they were going to open the program back up again. And we wanted to try it out, you know, see what it could be like. So Ms. Vanderveen and I actually applied together to teach the class. And we had 60 students and we taught broadcasting and yearbook and journalism in the same class period with 60 different students and it was crazy. It was total, total chaos. But after that we sort of separated out so it became its own broadcast class. We have learned how to use this really old, old switchboard and we used that for the last couple years. Uh, we also had this really old ancient switchboard. I, I think we still have it somewhere in the, in our studio. And like what I said, it was it's just like so ancient it was probably from like the late 80s or something or god I, I don't know when and last year we finally um, partnered up with ASB and were able to get you know a good new switchboard that doesn't have like buttons that stick and things where a square just follows your face around it the whole time while you're trying to be on the broadcast and so on so we've actually you know steadily improved the equipment but it's also you know I I mean, I, I trained in film and I trained in film production and things, but I didn't train in broadcast television, right, or journalism. This wasn't really my something I, I worked in. So I've learned a lot about how to set it up and how the news should go and how things have worked. And so every year, you know, I learn more and I'm able to teach it a little bit better. I want to be a producer, sport a camera and a mic. I want to be a producer, it's creative. So Create TV is a local um, media program, uh, San Jose, it's like a non-profit program that is part of uh, San Jose Public TV. So they developed something called the MAP grant or the Media Access Project grant. And the way that that, that works is they take all of the all of the schools who want to, essentially, they apply, right? And so we applied as a school and explained how we would use all the equipment. And then 
10 schools got awarded the grant and so we got $50,000 of equipment and so that's the lights that we have, the cameras that we have, um, the five editing computers that we have, all of that stuff came from Create TV and so we had it for last year and this year and this year is actually the end of our two-year um, grant so it's not like we own the equipment, they own it, but we're borrowing it for two years and so at the end of this year I'm hoping you know we're gonna apply again and I'm hoping that we're gonna get to keep the equipment. So. Corey Asfor describes the work put into making a broadcast, as well as the idea that he came up with that has changed the broadcast for the better. Um, the broadcast, there's a pretty significant amount of work put into it. Uh, each team makes one show a week, and so obviously I'm an anchor. We just sit there and read the announcements, but uh, I think reporters really have the hard job because they have to go investigate, and a lot of it's done by themselves without the help of their team. So I'm a reporter. So and basically, as a reporter, I go around and I get B-roll of, which is just plain footage without audio, of people doing certain events or of certain events, such as maybe the talent show or matchmakers or AP English, pretty much anything that can and that is of interest to the students. And then I usually get try to schedule interviews with people pertaining to that event and ask them to maybe come in or maybe I will go to them to get interviews. Most of the time I just go to them and at the end of the, after I get all that footage I just edit it all together to make it interesting, make, film, make, put an intro and outro greeting and saying goodbye to the school off, before and after each feature and then I just give it to the anchors who edit it into the broadcast. We all just read it in real time on the teleprompter. It helps to look through it before, but you know, if you can keep up with it, it's not a problem. The thing that really pushed me over was I hated the music stands. Because we had the boards and you write on them and it's a big waste of time. And they put them on these music stands and they're all crooked. So a uh, teleprompter just seemed like it needed to be done. We have a huge step up from when I was a uh, freshman. We have teleprompters now. We have these uh, these amazing cameras and these uh, awesome lights. So we just took a huge step within these last four years. Just how much the tech, not that how much the technology has changed, but how much we finally caught up with the technology. So we've taken a huge step with that. You go on to the on your editing computer, and it has the teleprompter software, and uh, you just paste the announcements in there and uh, you know, put little spaces, change the colors for different anchors. After that, you put it on a USB and just bring it in here and start it with the remote. Um, some people, I think, like to have one of their crew members off camera adjusting it, but I like to have it in my hand, just perched right there, out of sight of the camera. So uh, basically, we, after we get the teleprompter set up, just read the announcements, and there's three cameras that are just there and somebody's switching between the cameras and uh, the computer records it all. We never actually push record on the cameras and after that we just edit it and upload. So basically what the switchboard does is coming out of the switchboard into the computer there's only one shot at any given time and there's three cameras so the switchboard just changes what cameras going into the computer. The lip dub was a school-wide project hosted by the broadcasting class that displayed all that SC has to offer. So originally, um, Mr. Louis sent an email to a few of us, uh, Ms. Pereira and myself, and said that we were going to be doing a board presentation. Every year, the schools have to do a presentation to the board um, and a lot of the times they tend to be kind of boring, like these are how many kids we have graduating and these, you know, like just numbers and stats and stuff like that. And so last year, um, my ASB kids actually presented the anti-bullying PSAs that they made. And so that was actually really cool. It was a video and it was way more interesting. So Mr. Louis said, let's step it up and do something even better. What are your ideas? And Miss Pereira wrote back, and right away she had seen a lip dub done by another school, and said, what about this? And I guess she was joking, but right away we were like, uh, yes. <laughs> like, that has to happen. 
And so uh, she, I don't think she knew what she was getting into. Um, but we right away wanted to do it. And, uh, and of course, she was actually, I think, just needing a little bit of encouragement. But I think when she actually sent the email, she was probably thinking it would be something that we could do. And so, um, so yeah, we just encouraged. Um, and, yeah, just helped with whatever we could. Helped the, you know, Miss Perra's classes with wh whatever they needed. <laughs> and I work really well with Miss Perra. So yeah. she and I, you know... I remember we had times where we were like, so if that's backwards, then wait, would the camera be, you know, and it's really hard to really picture it. And so we would just talk together and like, you know, try to talk stuff out. And, um, and like I said, I'm kind of like the, the cheerleader and the, we can do this kind of a person. So yeah. <laughs> Um, pretty pretty simple once you get the hang of it. In the beginning, um, just to get down the way things work is a little difficult on the first couple of days, but once you get the flow of things, it's just it's pretty simple. It just takes some time and it takes some it takes some effort, but like as you do it, you just see how fun it is, and when you see the end result, you just want to put in that much more work. So it's it's just a good good time every time. The thing, the reason that. Um that I wanted to to be a part of this program, and the reason that you know I I think it's super important is the broadcast is a place for students to have their voices be heard, and um, I work really really hard to protect students to allow them to have their voices be heard and not suffer repercussions from administration and from people who don't like what they have to say and whatever right because it's a it should be for students and by students, and so if you want to be heard I guess that's what I want to say if you want to be on the broadcast right and you want to be heard and you want to be you know the voice of our community then that's that's pretty much why you should join or of course if you want to do this you know for the rest of your life then you should probably do that too because we use pro stuff the broadcast has a bright future ahead and even after people like Michael have left people will begin to step up and have pride in what they do this show represents our school here at Santa Teresa High and we hope that it will continue to grow and blossom into something that not just people in this class but the whole school can be proud of